Okay, guys and gals. The crickets doesn't mean you get comfortable with the crickets. What it means is you're being crickets. And that's not a good thing. I keep saying this every week. It's not just enough to know uh, what you read and, and things that you find out and the research that you have. you got to put it together in a sense that you can use it. Some of the stuff I'll talk about isn't useful for maybe most of anybody. Certainly not anybody if you're not going to use any of it. I try to use uh, the details in the news, so-called the notice to us, that that which we can see are tactics, techniques, strategies, occurrences that are being used against us right where you live. And our non-action to these things, or our non-awareness to these things, or even our awareness without responding or acknowledging these things is what we were really given that we were admonished to not let happen. Now, I use some of these words, and it may sound like I'm all patriotic. It's just a matter of fact for me anymore. We either we either have these things to do and do them, or we're we're really subject to whomever is running their their uh, their plan. And that's the beginning and the end of it for me. So when I'm saying things that sound patriotic, I'm telling you these are the things that have been set before us that we that we respond through. Uh, that uh, is the only thing that people seem to respond. Uh, uh, to in in our dialogue, part of this issue of me talking on certain aspects doesn't mean that I actually embrace those more than to say this is the subject matter that everyone's familiar with. I'll speak through that, and this is the thing we have to agree with. Uh, or what we, if we don't, at least the way I'm seeing it, and I don't see many people coming back to say that I'm I'm wrong or so wrong that it, it, we need to really rethink this, which I'm always asking people for, if it's there. Uh, what I see, t seem to try and tell you and explain to you all is what we need, how we need to start thinking in order to stop the nonsense against us. And if we don't, it continues. It's just that simple. I don't know what more to say. It's kind of, if you were talking about natural law, that's a natural law. And then we got all our foibles I tell you about and how people are knowing us for our own. It's not like there was somebody who wrote the list on how to exploit people. That You learn that as you go through life if you if you tend to look at doing that. Look at the news today. It's all just, it's rife with people that learn how to exploit other people. Now, before we go too far, and I, I will lose, I will lose, this is, I think, BTW RLM 240 for those of you on recast or past cast or prodcast. And thank you again, uh, Jules at UCY.TV for doing all that. Again, I understand I'm on, in the morning. I haven't really checked the, in the morning over at UCY, you can hear a past cast if you don't want to go to the RLM site to get it uh, as a, as a da on-demand download. So, uh, again, appreciate all the uh, tunings in and whatever you're all doing there and passing the word out. It's helpful. Again, it's just getting the word out, uh, the things we have to do with what we know, not just that we know. So I go all over the world to find these, these evidences of the knowledges of things that are going on and try to bring them back to where you live, and that could be wherever you live around the world. I reference it to the United States because I'm focused more on the laws that I'm subject, uh, I, I will be subjected to, I should say that way, or things that I've, I've actually accepted that I'm subject to. In this case, I would prefer, prefer you to see the mining law, which is a grant. I've accepted that grant, so that's the law that I have to follow. That's what subjects, uh, subjects me in that, that choice. Now, in that choice was a trade-off. A lot of things in the world are not such a trade-off. A lot of things are what's happening to you. And a lot of things you just look around and you'll, we make every excuse. The, the, the fallen nature part of us is people will exploit that part of us that will say, I won't do much with this information. I'm not going to, okay, uh, that's too much for me to deal with. I've got other fish to fry, if you will. I've got a bigger battle to fight. But you never really go to that battle. And that's the crickets. You don't go to the battle you find that they're waging against you, and you make every excuse to not engage it, you're you're going to lose that battle, for sure. I mean, if you're not in the fight. So don't fight. Become peaceful. That's not how this thing works. That's not my choice either. I, I'm telling you that if you start insisting on the law that it or that it's been breached, uh, there's a breach to it, and, and we get accountability back, what we're doing is we're asserting peaceful coexistence. That's what the law does. The law, not the legal, not what passes as policy. Just pol I say legal is like policy. I mean the foundational stuff. 
the stuff that most of all of us don't even really know about, and certainly, uh, and I'm, I'm really having some trouble with this lately, certainly do not even know how to affect in their life at all. They don't have a clue. They really don't. And I, that's not a judgment. It's just the fact of it. I mean, I'm dealing with that. I've, I've told you this for forever almost. I'm dealing with this incapacity in us. And I don't understand it. I actually don't understand it. And that's why I keep suggesting, you don't have to listen to me. Just listen to what I'm telling you about what's our problem and then go get that black and white in your eyes and get it in the places that you're going to be confronted with. And that seems to be our own government, so-called. And I tell you, it's not really the government. That's just this inert framework. We give it, we, we breathe life into a, 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 a framework, a, fi a fictional framework, instead of really focusing on the people with utilizing the color of that framework. Uh, uh, that are hurting us. And there's mechanisms around that we can do that with. Now that's, again, as I come to the broadcast, I have different thoughts than what I put on my tab. So I've got to somehow get, go from the local to the, to the global, uh, with this because it's all the reflection of what you're up against in the world. Some, a lot of you haven't heard, there's nothing really new that I'm actually saying. I'm just trying to bring it to you in different ways that it shows us every week this is the reality that we're in. We've got to stop this, uh, this fluff that because we, uh, we, we've read a couple passages somewhere. Like, again, I'm, I'm kind of critical a bit about people that read the Constitution, and that's all they do. Uh, they don't have a clue that there the laws. That, they'll complain about it. They'll look in, around the government, the people in the government violating it, but they don't know the remedies about, that are built in to show you a couple things. And I don't even want to go to see what that is. When you start doing it, you'll see that there's a whole other problem. It's not just the Constitution. The Constitution is fulfilled in these laws. It may not be fulfilled in the policies. And the policies are what legislatures do now. So all of you all that do the study to find out and want to complain about, oh, well, this is about the corporatation, corporatization of the government. Well, go use that then. If you know so much, go use it. I do. It, it, it's really kind of interesting. It's almost, I can't say it's fun, but it's fun. I don't mean fun in the way that, you know, I'd rather do other things. That's why, so it's not fun. It's stealing my life. My life is about done. I'm done. And I'm finding out that it was a big ruse everywhere we look. And, and they're preying upon this thing. But I, it's fun at the point of, well, if I'm going to have to be in this, I can really make some trouble. And I don't mean just for being trouble. I can out these people. I can get right into that system and say, okay, here is it. This is, the, this is what we're playing. You forced me in here. You're going to have to, you're going to have to deal with what, what mess I'm going to make because you're not following your own laws. Understand what I'm saying here. They made a corporatization of things. Okay, let's use it, folks. Don't make an excuse to it. Don't just call it out. Use it. It's my main complaint about the Bundy thing. Use the corporatization. Use that law that said that they went to districts. As against their landed rights, that's irrelevant to them. Why don't they challenge that? Why don't they, as I, as I commented, there was a whole, and, and we went, and Twitter went to much more characters, and I was trying to reserve myself, but when I get into the, the law discussion, it's a little bit hard to constrain myself, and, and Grimner caught me. Said I was uh, using, making good use of the 288 characters now, instead of the 140. And I said, well, that's good, better than a bad use. And, and I did try to confine myself, but the point is that there's some things that have to be said now. We have the ability to do a little bit better. And I still think I'm doing okay. I don't have to spend the time now to worry about which the I can remove. So there's a little advantage in the little bit expansion that we can talk to. But Mike, I was a, a discussion and dialogue about the Bundy trial. And I said, why is everybody, uh, and it had to do with a, a reporter, a legitimate reporter who seems to, who at least Vince easily believes, and I haven't really followed it, but she, he believes that she's doing a fairly accurate uh, report. I think Maxine Waters, no, that was the, do. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Don't get into these people. She's doing, it's the reporter. Maybe her name's Maxine and that's the extent of it. Um, she's doing a fair response. Well, I looked at the condition. I said, why is everybody taking this judge's decision and just agreeing to the authenticity of the judge? Why does no one insist on challenging that? And if it's not a challenge, if it's just to ascertain that it is true, the authenticity that she is in the court that she's in. Why is nobody challenging that up front? It's really a, a real main problem. So everyone speaks that they're talking about the Constitution. They speak that they're upholding certain rights. And I'm saying, well, you're not in, a, you're not in defending the Constitution. You're, you're fighting some charges that have level, been levied against, levied against you. They're, they're, they're going to come after and they're going to prove the elements 
beyond a reasonable doubt. If you focus on everything else like the Constitution instead of that, you're going to lose. That's a fatal historic record that's going to be made for everyone. So why would you allow someone sitting in the seat of decision to sit there without being authenticated is really a, a, a problem for me. When they said question authority, they're not, they, whatever, whoever said that, they were not joking, whoever that was. And there's a way to do that. We got to the hippie, the hippie crowd in the 60s and 70s and then broke into the, into disco and we, oh, question authority. No, everyone didn't tell you how. They just said do it and then everyone sort of forgot it. And so here we are, we, here we are today, doing nothing, just complaining about everything and doing nothing and they win. The other side has got the plan wins. And, and for the record, I think Vine, uh, Vin E in the RLM chat, Maxine Bernstein. Bernstein, for those of uh, young Frankenstein uh, movie fame. Okay, so why aren't we doing what's the basics in ascertaining the legitimacy of every authority that presents itself? It's really a, 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 it's a crime in my mind that we don't do it. It's a crime to ourselves. This is the accessory, the criminal accessory we are to ourselves. They're going to impose themselves. Why don't you understand about that and become, uh, have some, uh, I like to call it an offense. You become offensive to them in, in your defense. And, and there's, I'm not saying it's silver, don't ever think I'm ever talking silver bullets here. What I'm saying is that you make an open record of what the reaction to that is. If you want to try and authenticate something and they refuse, wouldn't that be the a public record for the court of public opinion better than making everyone think you're talking about the Constitution and I'm fighting for the Constitution, then you get run down in a court that's completely incompetent and you wonder why? Because you never checked it? You never challenged it? And then you let these representatives called attorneys step in your way and as soon as you took that on became incompetent? No, go in and use the system for the corruption it is. Expose that. We're, we're having so much more 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 effect to do these kinds of things. We're having so much more effect to show how, where, once you understand, once you really know about something, and I have to advisedly say that, I know something to the point we know it. I don't know what we don't know, so that's going to always be the hanger. But we know enough, I think. I ran to a 42 on Twitter. I've been suggesting to you all go read uh, USC, what was that, uh, 28 USC 81 to 130. Three or whatever it is. Read it. Those of you who want to know about the court, the district courts, the, the district. I'm talking about the law, 18 what 71. You want to know about? That? Go read. It's right there in the statutes, and you're going to find there's no competent court that can happen in Nevada. Use it. Why are you all fighting about it? Just oh look, there's corporate courts. So what? No one cares about that until you go try to use it. And I'll tell you, the system doesn't want you to do that. So why are you not doing it? But but there's a there's tactics that they use against us. There's uh, mind control. There's uh, brainwashing. There's all kinds of stuff we'll complain about, but they're doing to us to it, and they make us ineffectual. That I've been uh, broadcasting for years and years to try and give everyone the ideas of how to identify the things that they're going to be up against. You have to strip from your mind that there's anything of justice right now I I available to us. There's a complete denial of justice. I've got a I've got a default judgment proving that for anybody that would want to look at it. This is not this is not my opinion. This is exactly what we, in earnest, in truth, looking at what we were dealing with, in all honesty, looking at what the heck happened to the America we thought was there. And I'm saying, ma'am, I thought was there, and I think I found it, folks. And part of me says it never may have never existed. That was another deception. We were duped. Okay, now we're in that battlefield. What do you do? You got treachery everywhere now you've been born into. By whatever means, however you want to find it, it's all whatever that's sitting there. How do you defeat all that anyway is really the point in my mind. Because if you don't, it defeats you at every turn. And we become a bunch of whiners and complainers. And that's, I don't want to see that for any of us. And that's my frustration. It's not about you. It's just for us. Whether or not the extent of my knowledge will work in every case, that's, that can't even be made. Don't, don't even throw yourself into that to try and defeat what I'm saying as an excuse. you got to go, go where you're going to go and, and uh, try to apply. Hopefully you can apply a lot of what I'm saying, at, at least as a start on your journey about this problem. 
Again, because when you don't, they they're defeat. They're take they're parasitically eating from your life if it isn't your life upon your life. And they put in our mind the most powerful tool that they have against us is our own mind. And we're really uh, looking at a steep hill to climb to figure a lot of this out. Uh, but it's it's dual. It was poss- It's plausible to to work through the. Uh, through the point and get to a point, and I, I think I'm my own example for that. Whether anybody wants to ever see that or not is really kind of, it's not your quest either. But it, I'm seeing now that if you don't do the quests that way, you're not in control of your own life because someone else is, and you can avoid it for all you want. But if one day it comes to your, well, it, while you're avoiding it, you, you you agree to be parasitically fed from. You become the host. Why do the computers say host and client? What do you think? What are they tell, they're telling us everywhere, if we look very carefully, what you are, you user. And they put you on the negative side of that user. If you understood that user is also a trust, and you find out where the obligation they have to protect that user is, maybe your life would become a little different. At least you'd, uh, you'd be able to have a word in your mouth about how they don't have a right to trespass, and that trespass is not just a mere mere little violation, not a little traffic ticket. No, no, these are the highest level crimes. Now, what am I saying? Now, where's, what am I saying there? I'm saying that you now make the public record for the public opinion. You expose these to the highest crimes. These are not some petty thing that you see people doing through the color of government. But do we have that record? No. Look, at, and I'm not going to beat down on this thing with the with the uh, the Bundys. But did they do it either? No. They talked a lot about stuff. Well, there's a couple actions that moved that that actually Ryan Bundy's starting to do. But he gets shut down. He actually admitted they get mocked. And I'm I'm on the Twitter saying, why don't you use that? That shows systemic bias. That shows a prejudice in the system that he can't get justice. Where he mo- three times asked for the the evidence from a camera. And he couldn't get anybody, the judge, to listen to him. And then it, what it took to get this camera become in there was a bar member saying so, and then pushing forward, and they finally get it out. That was evidence of systemic bias or judicial prejudice sufficient to cause fraud in the court against Ryan. Why aren't they moving on that? Why aren't they moving that to a collateral attack, not a motion giving them? A motion gives the judge... Does anybody know this? The motion gives the judge discretion to decide the question. Why would you hand the criminal the quest, the answer, uh, the, 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 the right to make an answer? Do we even under the most, do understand the most basic things that are going on? And so, again, I'm, I look up, uh, my tab is so far away from here. I can't get there from here, folks. And I told myself, I've got to go right through this. A lot of information today just to kind of tie some things together about how they, how they, they get us distracted. How they get us? We so focused on what we what we think we need to know. How if we become the next next guy or gal to make the next observation of the minutia that they want us to keep consuming? Menudo, I think, is a Mexican. In fact, in the in the RLM chat, I saw in the hamster wheel of of gameplay that's going on in the Jeopardy game, whatever the heck that game is going through. They answer the questions. Tripe. I think Vin E got that answer. Tripe. The menudo is what you put in menudo. It's this menu, menudo, you, minutia, all this stuff you get to go pour through, consume for you to waste your time. That's what they give to us. What I'm looking for is what are those, what are those informations that we are given tell us about who we're dealing with and how, what in the world that we've never been told may be there to defeat us if we didn't know this is the level of gameplay we're into. And so this is why I go around the world for this notice and this news to show you it's all there to show us who we're dealing with. It's uh, And it all ends up coming, there's a fractal. And all this treachery is in the world. It's in the world. It's local to you. It's what you're going to be dealing with. It's what you're avoiding whenever you do what you do. And you end up having to pay a bill that's really really not something that you use. As everyone wants to talk about that taxation is theft. Do something about it. If it's theft, go get accountability. If it's theft, what's your problem? What's your, why are you walking the accessory against yourself? If you know it's theft, go get remedy. And a bunches of you try to do it when there's, you're going to find that there really doesn't want to be remedy because you find out you're living in that open air prison, whether that's constructed in, in print or paper or wherever records or whether that's physical is irrelevant. To my mind, it's still the same point. You can make up your excuses all you want. You can have the First Amendment right in prison and it doesn't mean you're free. 
when you get around that, get around that little conundrum, you'll be all right. But I try to go through the world uh, every week. Uh, people may agree with me. Same people fall. I see it. And I thank you on Spreaker. Uh, there's a listener. Puts lots of comments. I don't do the commenting thing. I'm concentrating on what I'm going to uh, going through. Like right now, how I'm going to go from this part of the discussion to where my tabs start. But uh, thank you for commenting. I can get back in later. And I noticed uh, I lost you in a couple points. Last week, that's fine. That's I'm talking on things that I know are there, and it just shows the don't don't. You can disagree with me, but go research if you disagree with what I'm saying. I don't have a problem with anybody disagreeing, but go prove that I'm wrong. Go prove I'm not trying to instruct you in a direction. And and that's so that's just uh, I'll talk with you there that way on on air this way. I can't really talk with you real live, but um, if you don't agree with me, go research some more. I, I try not to be erroneous at all. You know, I mean, I've been running, you know, I'll come back a week later. Oh, yeah, I made a misstatement. Well, the word misstatement is different than a principle, uh, a principle um, understanding or a remedy step or an, a way to look at things. Uh, again, I want, I want better interaction with the social network. I'm not getting it. So even like, you know, someone comes on and I find out that this is, the, well, it's like a hedonistic, uh, oxymoronic hedonistic hypocrisy. I'm finding the social media as it just came out on one of the, uh, one of the posts in minds.com I didn't realize and this is how neophyte I am a noob on this stuff is I didn't realize that when you post on a, on a website if you if someone posts a contrary view or a different observation than you what you thought the world was like you can def, you can delete that observation you can delete whatever negative you can make your record look like everyone's thumbing up in you now, I just noticed that so I responded to that but it looks like that if you were, were the way I could the words I could only come up with is it's, you come up with this oxymoronic identity relative to what you're going to speak, and it's self-centered, hedonistic joy that you put out in, in the postings, and then it's, and your position becomes hypocritical to reality. And so I come up with this observation. It's, oh, O-H-H, oh, oxymoronic, hedonistic, hypocr hypocrites. That seems to be social media. At the point of action, it doesn't action doesn't exist. It's just us throwing a bunch of information around. And for myself, I come along and say, "Hey, listen, I can guide you to some things to go check out to solve you, to to at least orient your your problem. And if you want to solve it, I'll give you enough there too. Those that are aware to that accept it. They don't have to be right. It's just that I give them a direction. Those that have a self conflicted, they've taken the pills, folks. I tell them, get off the pills. Stop the red pills. Stop the blue pill nonsense." Get off the pill. Stop the self-absorbed addiction. You're going to have to start doing something. And you're going to have to understand how you're susceptible to being played. You're going to have to understand that there's people in the world that play for real. And until you, we all come to terms with that, because I'm not wired that, I'm not. it's the Machiavellian part. It's the real brutal part of reality of the life. And so we get a little bit of that. Let me get to over there now. <clears throat> what happened here last week right after the broadcast, I can jump now. Uh, we find out that they're going to go back over now in the world in the Middle East. Some big shakeup started happening. And I want us to look at these uh, notices to us as what's, there's lots, lots of levels going on here in the adjustment that went from, we're going to take out Syria, uh, we're going to show you how you live in the West. I told you it was the, it was the carnival mirror for how we live in the West. And we, it's distorted just enough we don't recognize what's happening over there. Our government in the United States of America, is, the United States government is doing to our people here. And if you don't don't think there's a destruction over the last many decades here, or decades or so, you just go to Detroit and tell me that doesn't that doesn't look like a bombed out place about your water system being taken out in Flint. You just you tell me your water being destroyed everywhere, poisoned everywhere. You don't think you're under a war zone in the United States and the government's helping that? I try to point this stuff out. You can talk about it, but well, who's doing what about it? I, I don't know. I don't hear much. I'm not saying nothing's happening, folks. Don't please those of you that are doing something. Do not take offense to that. Uh, I'd be more expect the people that make the excuse to take offense to what I say. In other words, I don't really. Have, I can, although I'd like to see more because there would be more more people understanding. I can see why people don't come behind the woodshed and listen to learn and then do. They don't want to hear the truth. Actually. No, my, the truth is a funny thing, but I think you all know what I'm saying. I don't come with anything lesser than what you'll find when you go look. Whether or not you may come away with the same interpretation, that that's certainly open to debate as well, if we would debate it. 
or if not, it's perfectly fine to have a different opinion. But you at least have to have a basis for it. You have to have a basis to understand of our failings and how we can be preyed upon, preyed upon what we see in the world that's just brutality that comes under the color of authority and, and what's supposed to be, how people are supposed to live. You don't think this reflects on your inner idea of what sovereignty is to watch this stuff in the world? You, you better rethink this one. And this is what came up at the end of the last broadcast that came on. I wouldn't necessarily touch it. I wasn't going to touch it, but so many things are rolling out that come back domestic and reflect uh, even as ideas and things that show us that we have people in this country you might, you know, you think you want to talk on an, on an agenda and running a political party helping you out, uh, that the politicians are there to do anything, that the financing of this thing goes on the way it works on, that there, any of that's there for helping you, even those that would say, no, it's not, and laugh at what I just said, you still agree to let it go on by letting it go on. But if you have any consideration that there's these, uh, we're all really nicey-nice about it, and you don't have to assert something objectively against this op world, global oppression. I, I don't know about you, actually. My, I really have to, I wonder about people's thoughts. But here we go on and jump back. What happened over the, in Middle East is, is really kind of fascinating as well. Though I don't have the time to really get in deep with it, and I don't intend to, I do want to understand, I want to mention these things to show you uh, this, we're watching Machiavelli principles or worse uh, going on in the Middle East right now with the Saudi Arabia. We heard a little bit of this news. I made a comment here and there as we went along just to keep the guidance of what was going on, keeping tabs of the dynamic over there. Because I want you to understand the underlying problem for the United States, the people of the United States, is that the United States government stuff will do what you see over there to you, and it's going to use Israel to help it. Is the underlying method meme here, the me message or theme here, and we can see that the player, how the players are. It's not conjecture anymore. It's not. We don't need WikiLeaks. We haven't need WikiLeaks to expose any of this at all. I've talked about all this myself before, and I'm kind of astonished that this is any of this stuff becomes still an ongoing question. That all the uh, alt right gurus, documentarians, speak like they know what's up. Th this is already planned ahead of time. If you saw how these how these these criminals, these world oppressors, work. Now here's a whole bunch of neat stuff coming down to let us know. Purge of Saudi princes, businessmen, widens, travel curbs imposed to watch what a kingdom does. A kingdom does, locks, locks everything down in a kingdom. Are, are you locked down now at the TSA, folks, if you don't think this is a different thing? A campaign of mass arrests in Saudi Arabian royals, ministers, and businessmen expanded on Monday after a top entrepreneur was reportedly detained in the biggest anti-corruption purge in the kingdoms of F affluent elite in its modern history. Now, there will be a lot of names. I'm not going to read too much here. I'm talking about phase one implementation. We heard uh, this guy named Solomon. He's one of the one of the sons of the existing king. Uh, he was brought in to be the crown prince and the king uh, to come. That uh, the, Right after that, you started seeing some shaking up, and this guy started consolidating power. Uh, they're talking about this being a purge. I'm not so sure, and I'm not going to get into whether the accuracy, what it looks like, they're going after the money. We have some indication of that. They're actually after the money, and they're actually after allegiance, because the people they're constraining are actually, they are promoters of the existing king's position. Maybe not necessarily this kid, 32-year-old kid Solomon's position, but the king, they're not, they're not dissident of the king itself. So the so-called purge is an interesting problem to get in. The point is that these people, uh, there's a shakeup going on of pretty epic proportions, I assume, given who the players are with Syria and that failed plan. And don't miss that. that the, way the Saudis get involved in every so-called every failed plan that they've been involved in. And don't forget all the other players with the Sauds, okay? So what caused me to think about this was when they started getting the names, and yes, you got it's hard to keep up with the names, but the, one of the names they talked that was picked up by this was uh, arrested. Saudi prince owns top five floors of Vegas Mandalay Bay. Guns carried down three floors. Question was that this guy, uh, Prince uh, Al-Walid bin Talal, is one of the Saudi family uh, people that were arrested under this so-called corruption. Now, I understand, and I don't know, but I understand that, uh, you know, 
governmental corrupt this, this family corruption at the highest levels is is rampant. It's been going. It, it's it's part of how you do business, I suppose. And I'm just going on the information I can find. It's pretty universally understood. So corruption is really the cover story. The problem I had with this was that I, I took note, and I didn't make a big deal about it because I don't want to get into all these names. I don't know who they are. But this Al Walid popped up in the in the paddock thing. It just meant, oh, this, by by. Just by chance, this this Saudi Arabia, and I'm thinking as soon as I saw that, I go, well, there's a connection. Weren't the Sauds involved with the, we also hear the Saudis are involved with 9-11? Okay, so we got a big, deep, deep play going on here. And so it comes out that right after this guy, this kid gets uh, into and consolidates some power in the military, the police, and all this in Saudi Arabia, he goes after so-called anti-corruption people. He's after the billionaires, all the money. Like he's going he's gonna to pull up that $500 billion that you heard Trump and Kushner uh, to say that it was coming from the United States. So this is all starting to tie together at some level. I'm not telling you it does tie together. I'm telling you, look at the play going on here. Look at how people are working behind the scenes when they want something to accomplish. And if you're not at that level, you're probably getting run down. Now, if it is, let me put it to in a different way, because I'm not at that level, but I can defeat some of this. Not this stuff, but the other stuff that happens locally to you where people are really well organized and uh, really own the top four, five floors, and then and then attack your own town in different ways. That you you have to find where the weak links are, and you have to be a, be aware of that. Go back to this thing with the paddock, and I told you I did. We did that broadcast. I did that broadcast and put it out there. Got good reception on that. Didn't get last week good reception on the project. I guess the name and the title isn't sensational enough for everybody. This is important information every week, I think. But uh, here we have the paddock. Uh, the, this is a plan. This is a, interestingly tied to a, uh, the Saudi prince uh, family with that now is going through a purge, the owner of which is one of the ones arrested. We also find out that in that time, and I didn't track this down, but I'd heard about it. I do have a link. It'll show all the broadcaster. Uh, this Salman kid was also in, in uh, Vegas at that time at the Tropicana. There's now video as well, and I can't, I'm not going to qualify it myself, of this kid walking out with armed guards, cops with big with shotguns and things, walking out pretty quickly through the casino. The guys, the, the kid likes to likes to uh, uh, to gamble, and he's not in his robes. So now you see a costume and a uniform that gets people to believe he's got authority. Just a fat kid. It's this kid. He's a fat kid. And no no expense to fat people. I mean, he's just talking. He's just not some 32 year old. Uh, you know, a soldier guy or uh, fit in his own life. No, he's a he's a slug. He walks with with feet stuck out like a waddle. And and if that's the guy, that's the king. This guy's he, he's just a, an abuser of people. Not because he's fat and he walks with a waddle, but because he puts on the air of a king. And he's just this. He's just a slouch. He's a criminal. He has armed guards, folks. And if you have to understand, in the United States of America, to have cops come in. Uh, innocent people sitting in the casino being told to raise their hands because this Saudi prince to come and king uh, is walking through the room at the time that the the, the, paddock, the Mandalay effect is happening it is pretty insulting. This is what your government will do, is I guess the point. It, it, it takes its resources to protect scumbags like this in the world. People that will attack other people, innocent people. People that will uh, purge, so-called purge, will consolidate power into themselves with a mind to go after other people. In this case, this kid, Salman, was, uh, I understand, ejected from his town, uh, his uh, his country, uh, by his grandfather, if I get this right, uh, and said, you, you, you aren't, we don't want you to go, stop, stop talking about going after Persia. Well, what's Persia, folks, but Iran? Look at the Middle East and what are they after but Iran? And this kid's now coming to power. And he waddles like a duck. He's got the power of the gun uh, to protect him walking through a casino. It was a pretty big insult in my mind. All happening at the time that the, pa the Mandalay effect is going down. To the thought that maybe he was uh, actually uh, had an assassination attempt. I'm kinda, I don't quite see that in the, in the video. He wasn't that protected. He was protected just by a walkthrough. But to have people, uh, Americans, have to put their hand up because this guy in a t-shirt, folks, a t-shirt and sandals and shorts, or with a purse, walks through the room, uh, that you have to put your hands up uh, is, is really the height of watching the, a people, a servient people in their, only, in their mind. As long as they get to be entertained, they'll even raise their hands up to some joker walking through the room because some cop with a shotgun says so. I hope 
again, I'm not getting into the geopolitics. I'm trying to show you that we are a, we are a subject people in our mind. We are we are we are we're really kind of done. We have to fix that. But we're not going to fix those people in the casino. We're going to fix those that come to behind the woodshed and start figuring this out and then take that knowledge and go out and start working with it. So I, I'm talking so far out of my out of my expectations in this case. Uh, I don't even know. At some point I do have a question why I even talk about it. But you're watching. Uh, this comes to roost at home pretty quickly. Now this kid, uh, 20 Salman, uh, Muhammad bin Salman, uh, the the was at the drop of cannon. He gets escorted out under armed guard. There was a thought that he was a he was that the the Mandalay. Uh, there's a thought going on that the Mandalay was a cover cover fire, literally for an assassination attempt. Now I'm not going to say that it was. I'm saying that all these plausible possibilities could be working on. I didn't see the imperative of an assassination attempt attack with this kid walking through with sandals and a t-shirt and shorts uh, walking through with uh, eight or so uh, cops with, with riot shotguns and, and AK, I don't know, uh, excuse me, it would have been uh, uh, the other rifle, the American rifle, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. I don't pay attention to all that. It's just that you see it. You see Americans being put servient to a Saudi king to come. Now, we see a purge happening after the Mandalay effect. There's all kinds of stories. I don't have a way, to, a time, and a mind to go check it down. This Paddock guy wasn't who he said he was. Uh, you don't get to live in the in the uh, this this cr other crown prince's uh, 32nd floor purchase uh, unless you have connections to the Saudi government, which means he wasn't just a gambler. So we got a whole lot of things that can come together. They're willing to come to your country. And make you uh, bow to this guy by putting your hands up. That set up and kill people here to cover their whatever's going on in the Saudi. And the government of the United States is cool with that. And I guess the other point here. They're willing to kill people to do whatever they want, which is historically known. This is not new. I'm telling you and pointing out this is very plausible and possible that this was coming down in the United States. And the government really allows it. Remember, this is the same time when, the, as the purge goes on, the Saudi government pulls out a legislative a prime minister, I think it was, or president, and a, a, the Hariri guy, and, and calls him back like he orders them like some servant to the king. And then they kidnap him. And they make him make a statement that he's abdicated his office. Why is the UN to call out this problem? is the problem. So the UN, I got to focus, all these things come around, all come around, like the mandala. You want know the mandala effect? Look at the fractal mandala that we grow. Each coming back to the center of the problem. Going way out, no matter how far out in the solar system, you're going to come back to the center of the sun. You're going to come back to see the problem. Now when are you going to do something about it? So in the question of this rig, this so-called uh, consolidation of power, whatever's going on. This is They're attacking people that are supportive of the king. They're doing it in the United States. Apparently there could have been a hit on the new king to come. Not kingdom come. King to come. For Saudis. Making servants to about uh, with Americans over some guy walking, the same guy walking through, in slippers no less, walking through uh, a casino hall of all places. I mean, to me, that's the epitome of the problem, in a way. But So the problem is, another thing is, what's going on in the politics of Saudi Arabia? Who are they dealing with? Well, we know that the Saudis are all involved with the United States. The United States here, just understand, it's the decider. Understand it's the decider as, as heavily conditioned or constrained or uh, advanced by Israel. And these the Sauds also look like the puppet mercenary as well, and I want us to look at that, that the government uh, certainly, it's not a secret, we want to point it out so we don't lose it. People will use mercenaries against you. So they don't get caught, that's the other thing, plausible deniability. But there's a shake-up going on in Saudi, but they don't want to get it too shaken up, so it comes out for all everyone that's talking about, and this, uh, talking about that this Salman kid, is going to be uh, that the king that there is going to abdicate his throne. He comes out now because it's causing. They do have a problem with the political. If this plan doesn't work, uh, the Sauds are uh, the Saudi government's in trouble. Uh, if they don't have con absolute control, if the king doesn't have absolute control of this. Uh, they could lose this whole thing. The people that they arrested underneath the trumped up charges, and it might have been trumped up 
Kushner charges aren't going along with the allegiance pledge that they're being given, I understand, to have these charges dropped. Well, if they haven't charged the drop, well, that's just an extortion and a, and a, and a coercion, isn't it? So the government is not beyond causing these things. We see that in our own country. When are we going to stop making uh, stories about ourselves, about the, elite, the special place that the United States is, when we can see all these things happening to our country? You don't think it's a monarchy? You look at what happens to your people. It's how, uh, the same thing happens uh, here as happens there. Abdicating is unthinkable. Saudis deny King Solomon will relinquish throne to his son. So they got to come out and say that, that this is not a, he's not going to give up. And I didn't anticipate that it was. I think this kid is actually having to consolidate his power. He has to, for, uh, you know, this is like the knights, this is daggers and swords and things. I mean, this is the knight, uh, cloak and dagger stuff. It's pretty cool to watch, but this is what everyone's agreeing can happen and does happen. And I have to just keep saying the United States is a part of it. Uh, the United States and Israel is a part of it. I do not, I do not find it inconsequential that the Balfour Declaration came up and all this starts 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 happening again with uh, May com bringing in her her support for the establishment of the creation of the Zionist condition. And then we see the connection. Remember, uh, Sauds are all murdered. Remember the hedge of money, hedge of money, not the hedge of money too, but the hedge of money that the petrodollar so called. It is with the Sauds as well, and they're on some they're on some some financial straits on top of it. That's probably partly what they're doing with this financial coup. You know, they got hundreds of billions and dollars. The billionaires are working with their own family that they can just uh, absorb by like they do search and seizures here. See, there's no there's no where the rule of law and democracy rule. You have no justice. I want you to re never forget that. Rule, this is where they spread rule of law and democracy. You're watching it. It's mob rule for a minority. In other words, you got you are divided, and they're the actually the ones in control. That's how they do your local codes and stuff. they got a few people that sit in the seat of decision that you haven't figured out how to control, and a minority causes friction in the community, dividing it, and then they get their way. And then you're all in the, under the servitude. It's a brilliant plan. I mean, these people really have worked this out pretty clearly. Pretty, pretty easily. And we, we are duped all the time. So they have a problem. The indication, the, the abdication is unthinkable. Well, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen, folks. But that's, they got to, they got to be careful on what, what this thing gets done. But, so let's keep going on this, this thing. Who's the players? Who, who's influencing our lives? What, what's the, this carnival mirror that we see happening over the Middle East that I can point out is happening here just in a slightly, a slight distortion to it all. As I keep telling you, it's all here. It's already here. The, the illusion in your mind is what keeps you from seeing it. They call these things uh, for spectacularism. Uh, we're going to call this headline explosive. Leaked Saudi uh, excuse me, leaked secret Israel, Israeli cable confirms Israel-Saudi coordination to provoke war. Because you understand that the Sauds also set up that Lebanon, completely innocent, after they took out its, uh, its uh, they stole away their, their, uh, their government, one third of their government here, uh, officer, and this Harari guy. He's actually a Saudi as well. And I looked at, when I found that out, I'd go, how does no one, how does anybody not see this as a setup for a takedown? That the, the Lebanese uh, official is actually subject to the Saudi king once he abdicates his own position, which he did. So this is a setup for a takedown. And then right after that, Israel pops up as being part of this question. Uh, we always had, uh, we always continue this question. Well, is this Israel involved with the Sauds and Brits and the coalition and the United States? Uh, is this a question? How many years has this not been a question that it's still playing out as a question is your notice to how long you will go without taking action against something local to you. This is how they do it. We see now the, 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 the leaked cable. I don't even know why we need this stuff. I guess it gives us authority. I tell you, you do need the evidence if, you're gonna, if you want to go and go along and presume everybody innocent, which I think you should do at some level until you see the scope of the organized crime against you. And when you see a party to that scope, 
uh, a part of that scheme and artifice, that, that organized uh, reoccurring racketeering organization, you can pretty well throw everybody in that in that cup of tea. You can drink it if you want. Or you can throw it down the drain. Realize what it is. It's the poison that it is. That uh, Saudi Arabia disguised D declared war on itself from Lebanon with Lebanon uh, not having anything to do with it after controlling one of its its members. And then you look at the map and you say, well, how is, how is Saudi Arabia going to attack Lebanon? It's almost like a physical impossibility. I mean, the Sauds are dependent on American technology, but are they going to really step up and use it that distance? For well, such a small place? They're not likely. So they must have a friend in the, in the, friend in the, in the region to go try and attack them. Well, who is that but Israel? Their compatriot in all of this, right? So here we have it. The leaked is secret Israeli cable confirms Israeli-Saudi coordination to provoke war. What is this Zionist tool that was created in the Balfour Declaration by a Secretary of State's letter, no less? Nothing special. Just a letter. Just a nod, wink and a nod of what was going to let on and happen. No, the world said nothing. The UN said nothing. They're all partners to the crime against us. They want to attack Lebanon because they're failing everywhere else. They think the same plan that they tried and failed in Syria is going to work in Lebanon to give someone a foothold to stop what they're actually, what it appears to be they're actually after Hezbollah, which appears to be the, a people's army. And I don't plan, I don't pretend to be an expert on all this. It's just what I've been reading and trying to find out about it. Uh, and, the, and the little bits of stuff I can find and dig up real quick. And then make some cogent sense to show us that these people that are out there in the world, the oppressors, play for keeps. And they don't care how they do it, and they don't care who they play with to get it done. Your job is to identify who they play with. Because those people that they're associated with all need to eventually go away in the world. Can you stop them immediately? Well, probably not. But can you identify those influences and how those mechanisms work locally to you and stop them there? Yes, you can. And that's what I try to tell you to do all the time. It's not that hard. It doesn't take whole armies of people to do so. So we have a suppose a explosive cable comes out and confirms Israel's provocational stance for war in the world. And we, the United States, uh, the United, not we, the United States government supports that wholly. And why would not wholly like in religion? Although there's some of that behind the scenes, isn't it? There's supposed to be also this cover of religion that they say that they're Jews. No, well, there might be some people that really believe in the religion, the Jewish religion, uh, there. But that's not what the state was created to do. And it wasn't a self created state like the people started up they just took advantage of the of the power of struggle that was a, or the power wink and a nod power control protection that was provided by that Balfour declaration and certainly the United States is going to back all that up so we have another here another thing here that uh, confirming that, that Israel is a merc a merc a creation it's why it's so so armored up Notwithstanding that, uh, the Hezbollah, the People's Army of Lebanon. I mean, I got my hat got to come off to some of these people. Uh, I, I can't even imagine how voracious they are in protecting themselves, and, and, and rightly so. And I've known a few Lebanese people, uh, really intelligent people, uh, really peaceful and considerate. So my experience at that minimal level. I really, I can't look out in the world and find wrongness in people, generally, just for the sake of it. In an organized band and group called nations, or pretend nations, absolutely can show that they're all like any government that's going to harm and oppress people. Now, Israel's not even a real real setup. It's a creation. It was made, it's a tool. It's being used for what, it's the weapon that it is. It is tasked, and it has its own functions to continue its tasks in order to be a weapon for other others. We see this effect here as also in the news. All at the same time, all this happening down, uh, coming down, is Saudi Arabia asked Israel to strike Lebanon, as stated by Nasrallah, the Hezbollah. And I suppose I could be calling it, uh, pronouncing it Hezbollah, but excuse whatever dialect I should be speaking here. It doesn't matter to me. I'm looking at words. Uh, I understand what's happening. You should too. But Hezbollah 
Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah said that Saudi Arabia has asked Israel to strike Lebanon. Now, I don't know what right they had to write uh, to do that, but you just see these are partners in crime. And they could care less about sovereignty. They could care less about anything uh, on the on the upper level. And they, and they all will claim that they have they have problems with let's say Iran, but see that's the problem. That's a setup too, isn't it? The United States wants Iran. Well, what's what this young kid Salman wants to go off to Persia? What what a better candidate? The task to go ahead and try and start another another attack on another country like they did in Syria, failing as they are, and it's not over yet for Syria. Syria's got a long uh, long battle there. Just because they're breaking out and down ISIS doesn't mean ISIS goes away. Or all the other problems they've got, which we, the Russian uh, depart, Russian army, uh, the MOD came out to explain, and I was, I could, you know, I don't, my mind doesn't work this way, folks. But what Russia has had to deal with has really been impressive. That they've come along, what they've done. It's not just their air force. What they've had to do on the ground is really an impressive effort. And I'm again, I'm going to keep that in the neutral. I don't, I'm not, I'm not promoting anybody. I'm saying a country, a supposed sovereign country, got attacked, and you see the United States living there now without right. Uh, asked the ask the country that was being attacked, asked the help from another country who came in, and on the surface certainly is doing the job to help protect them. The protection of the con, the protection of which Syria would have been done weeks, months, a couple of months after we saw you know, if, if Russia hadn't stepped in. Russia has a has been doing a job I could not have ever thought. I mean, the things that they're dealing with, I didn't even cross my mind of having to deal with. They they are dealing with them to get it to the condition where you see it's not nearly over. They just have one of the major tools of the West broken up in order to keep it organ uh, from being organized again, divide and conquer. You see that right there. You see, if you want to defeat someone, you have to divide them down and, and to conquer them. You're seeing this. Prove out. It's what they do to you in the United States. They do it on all the Western government. The governments do that to the people. Again, it's a, the, the same story over and over. We're watching the notice to us on how we've been defeated and are continually defeated. What we have to understand and rise up against. But uh, Hez- Hezbollah, uh, Secretary General, uh, comes out and tells us they're going to get Israel to come attack us. Now, before I get all like fear mongering, like I'm saying, I'm understanding the people there understand what's going on. They're 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 not they're not overly concerned that can actually happen or would. And I would have to say, yeah, I'm not so sure if Hezbollah will have to come back uh, to lay off of Syria for a while to go kick Israel's tail. I guess it will again. Now, that's not saying that there might not get really really. Uh, get to the point where we are looking at nuclear threats, and that's coming up. There's no question now that uh, Israel has the nuke, and why? And so that's becoming now boiling to the surface, as everyone's attempting to ma- bring stability back to their their nations. So Israel's another tool, as we've been knowing. They're part and parcel to the to the underlying strife, and then we find out it's just a creation of Britain. And what was fascinating to, to me is that in that same week we have this big problem with someone from Britain going over to uh, Israel and having high-level meetings. High-level meetings with the, with Israel. Why? And then doing it wrong. I mean, why do you call yourself out? But uh, So the, on this story where they're also saying, and Nasrallah is also explaining, that the Saudis have offered tens of billions of dollars to have Israel go attack Lebanon. So we see the evidence of, at least through Nasrallah, uh, Nasrallah uh, his statement through this, uh, through this, their intelligence, uh, Mer- Israel's just a Merc a Mer- a Mer- group, a Merc gang. I can't give them state status myself. I can't give them the land status. They're acknowledged as, you, as uh, uh, occupiers wrongfully. Whatever their rightful claim is has not been uh, actually developed till today. Notwithstanding the ad- admission that it's just a creative, a, a tool created by Britain, by a letter from a Secretary of State, that uh, they are willing to take money to go hurt people. I want you to remember that. The Pazin, I mean, do you think think about this? If you think that people aren't able to be bought off in the world, 
This is one of the other jokes that's happening in Persia. You think billionaires, you think they can be bought off? At some level, you're beyond. And I think the billionaires that have power in a family of kingship are kind of beyond all the rudiments of, of control. So this, is, this is a whole different ball game at that level. You think those people really can be bought that way? But we see people can be bought. And it only takes tens of billions to engage Israel. And which means I want to point out that now go dimensionally, multidimensionally, on every level, folks. They can be bought for doing anything, these people. This is a Merck gang. This is not a, a government state. And, and there's no evidence in my that I've found that proves, uh, that shows that they could be. It's the illusion that everyone wants to continue to continue buying into. And they put the cover terms over it to cover, make costume over it to make it more than what it really is. It's just a gang created by Britain or protected, the space protected for it to foster and encourage it. A uh, document, uh, somebody who's doing a, re a reporter uh, back there, back in the Middle East, uh, there was a document that was finally released by the United States government. Remember I talked to you all the time to be careful on what's omitted, the the, the, the lie by omission. I've had made many d discussions about this on broadcast. And uh, someone who's doing a report uh, on Twitter came up and said, here, uh, no, it was uh, somebody down in Argentina, if I remember right. And uh, then it was simply this little Twitter that uh, said, uh, for immediate release, five days later, Secretary of State wake, wakes up to the Saudi-inspired crisis in Lebanon. And then it goes on to quote, part of the letter the United States State Department issued about supporting Lebanon's national institutions and armed forces. But when you go read the letter, it actually condemns the militia and other things that shouldn't be in Lebanon. And I responded to this position of taken by the poster that said that the Secretary of the United States Secretary of State woke up five days after this nonsense in Saudi in the Saudi taking the Prime Minister away from Lebanon and all this other shakeup and said is waking up if the is it waking up if the United States doesn't condemn the Saudi Arabia or continues further support and petrodollar hedge of money. It's one thing to support say you support the official institutions of Lebanon. It's quite the other to condemn the party who's attacking you. That didn't happen. And then I contend I continue and say, and this is where the two hundred and eighty eight characters comes in handy and if it isn't an armed forces or national institution, that notice appears to target Hezbollah. And then I ask, and these are rhetorical questions, what is the coalition, in quotes, doing in Syria on the same premise? When we look at the totality of who the main player of this whole fiasco in the Middle East is, is the United States of America. Using whatever whatever tool it can do, it's moves it, proxy uh, terrorists, allowing people to come in. It sits there on the land without right on top of it, facially directly in, in Syria's face, facially in face of everybody. The big bully and brute. It, uh, it among friends, it's used mercs. It, it's using Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is now doing Israel. Israel and the United States are working together. And then the statement that comes out of the state of the Secretary of State is, we're only going to recognize the national institutions and armed forces. All the rest of that's in there in Lebanon, that's going to be free game. By omission, folks. He doesn't talk about it. They just say they don't support that. Isn't that the same premise that they're in on Syria? And so my take on all this, and all the experts that are looking into this, are, are not necessarily seeing, uh, again, they don't see this part. For all of us here watching this, do, even though Lebanon doesn't, the people of Lebanon are, can't see that it could happen. There's nothing saying that uh, another spring can't pop up over in Lebanon. There's nothing saying that uh, the United States wouldn't allow uh, something to fire up, notwithstanding what the people want. The United States did not come out to condemn the actions of Saudi Arabia. Did not con did not warn Israel not to enter. It said the United States would consider would uh, honor the sovereignty of Lebanon and its national institutions and armed forces, not those that might be in the militia or the people. Now let me get into that militia 
or the people? What's the United States but the Second Amendment? And you see the government, the, the courts of the government, already trying to slice very thin whether or not a militia is someone that should have a, a, an arm or belongs to the state. That's the same thing, folks. It's in this country already. They, they attempt to try and cut you away from your own. So to me, I see... Well, again, what you see happening over in the Middle East, we get to see and witness what's happening here and to us. And if we don't have an awareness of that, these the details that slip our awareness are those things that will defeat us eventually. Certainly not. Certainly on the front end, if we're not aware to this, we can't respond. And then we have the other problem. Then we have to be aware and be aware correctly of a right, be a correct awareness, then correctly act. So we have quite quite a, a bit of work to do if we're all still talking to each other and and, uh, and complaining to each other about how, how much we know about how bad it is instead of really setting, settling down and doing it. Again, I'm not trying to be a geopolitical analyst here. I'm trying to show you there's a dynamic of oppression in this world that's happening. People are using these dynamics right around you in your in your own neck of the woods, if I can put it that way. So what's this root? This this connection. We got this big connection going on between Britain and, and, and the United States and Israel again and again and over using the Sauds and all this other stuff. Uh, what's the what might be the impetus? Remember, Kushner and Bush. Oh, excuse me, yeah, Bush. Uh, Kushner and Trump went over there right before a lot of this too. Uh, and another analyst, uh, literally someone who does this for a living, came out it was uh, after talking with Bashar al-Assad, and he put up a an interview. Another uh, another group of people had an interview with this gentleman, and uh, his statement was: uh, it's, uh, "Anis Nakash, Jared Kushner came to KSA, the King, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, the Kingdom, folks." We're supporting a kingdom, right? Not not the, not even the rule of law and democracy there. It's just a kingdom. To show you how allegiant we are in the United States is to its own its own supposed uh, per, uh, cause. But anyway, Jared Kushner, he says, uh, Anis Nakash, came to a KSA and said, if you have a problem in securing the amounts, you can take them from the princes and financiers. And so this now brings a new twist, if you will, or a new to compl another additional complexion uh, that the Zionist uh, compliant, uh, agreeable, uh, comfort, aid and comforting Kushner went to the Saud and said, "Listen, well, you got your money as a kingdom. If you have your money, it's in all, it's in all your surf people. It's all it's in your billionaires. It's in what they've made up. You can take all this money. You can use that those industries to underwrite more money." And why would they do that, folks? They're supposed to be getting all this money from the petrodollar. It's indicating they're not getting it. It's also indicating they can't fund the the they are not able to fund this condition that they want to spread around the world. At that level, that's pretty encouraging. What's not encouraging is that's not where the buck stops. The buck stops with where the United States. The buck stops with the Israel. And so we see people in the United States making decisions, and uh, they found the people in the government in the world that'll buy, take their money, whatever, or influence, or come, or toys, or whatever the heck it is to go hurt people because they're that kind of people. They love to break. These people love to break people's knees. Why wouldn't I want a new a new style knee breaker? Give me that. I'll go break someone's knees. I just love to watch someone. I just love to hear the knee crack. So we have a little bit of a background that the money that was gone, the $500 billion they were talking about, is really sitting in the people in the crown prince's own uh, family in all their billionaire, in all the corruption that created their billionaires. It's sitting right there, folks. And there's a whole other financial thing going on behind the scenes. As you follow the money and you start looking, have an eye for it, you start seeing there's a whole other stuff going on. Trump might be involved, Kushner, all with their properties in the United States of America. Everybody's in bed. Everybody's in bed. It's not what what you're looking at. You're not looking and being told what's actually happening. And I'm not here to tell you what it is. I'm telling you whatever you're seeing is giving you indications. It's all a big setup. And that's the part that bothers me. 
the people in Lebanon may not be feeling like there's too much going on, but it may not be up to them. It may not be their decision to not have something happen. I'm, I'm certainly not the brainiac to figure all this, you know, skullduggery out, but I can just tell you there's a lot of skullduggery, and if you don't get a handle a little bit on how they do it and realize that there's already systems in this country, in, the, in, the, in all your countries, but in particular the United States of America, even down to your local governments that are all set up, that all this same nonsense can go on. We hear a little bit about it, and, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use this as an excuse when you hear the pedophile thing. That's another tool. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. I'm certainly one that's told you it does. What I'm saying is that be careful we don't start throwing everybody under the bus where an allegation comes forward. This is, in the United States right now, that's the corruption uh, uh, card being played that you hear, the corruption card being played uh, in Saudi Arabia is the pedophile thing going on, or now the sexual abuse thing. I'm not saying it's not happening. In fact, lots of people are coming out to, uh, to admit or agree it happened. What I'm saying is that that becomes a big hole to throw a lot of people under the into that hole in order to cover up bigger things that are going on inside the system. We, we, we're watching the mechanism how this works. Well, during the same week, somebody out of, out of, out of Britain, no less, is Pretty Patel, and they made plays on the word pretty, but Pretty Patel, clinging on after details of more Israel meetings emerge. Well, since then, she's resigned, so she wouldn't get kicked out, even though the videos I saw said she was kicked out of her office for going over to Israel on her private holiday and having, I understand, 12 high-level meetings with the Is Israelis to take funds from some uh, United Aid or some, uh, some aid to development governmental money from Britain to hand it to the Israelis for war. She got caught and then said, oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't understand, you know, I didn't quite realize it was going to hurt anybody's feelings that we were doing it. My view on that is that she took a little bit of it. This has always been going on. They've been funneling money from behind the back, back, the back door. You, you see the, the Panama Papers turned into this paradise thing now. That was all, it's all what it is, folks. You're just watching this. This is what I call the grant stream funding for the United States of America through the agencies to the states to the counties to, to all these people that are taking down your land. Conservation, environment, all, this is all the same stuff, folks, I guess is the point. But uh, Prati Patel goes over and makes 12 big old meetings, serious meetings, while we're trying to fund Israel uh, another way. To go do what? Go hurt people some more. Again, showing the, that the, the Britain made this as a tool. And I think the problem was that she got caught. It was supposed to be kept behind the scenes. That's what's been going on. Now that has a, a threat to embarrass everybody. It works a little different than like the pedophile. You blame someone to be a pedophile, and the one you blame, you don't look at the one that's blaming that may actually be doing worse. Because oh, you got the one you you got the one that they fingered. They got caught. Now this one comes out and says, "I did twelve meetings. I'm going to make oh, I'll just do this thing on my own time." Remember, I mean, they're in office. I don't know how they're not ever doing something again. You know, once is once intelligence, once CIA, always CIA. It's, it's like this: is what happens. How can you have your own private time? I don't know. But there she is making financial aid discussions with high ministers in Israel. All the same week, folks. All this thing coming down to go in advance, uh, uh, well, as uh, requesting that the Israel do Saudi Arabia's light work in Lebanon. Whether or not it happens, I don't know. Uh, I'm just saying the people of Lebanon may, be, may want to be careful what they think they don't want to happen. I'm sure the people in Gaza uh, would prefer a whole lot otherwise, too. Leaked documents exposing stunning plan to wage financial war on Qatar. Qatar, no, we're not playing music. Qatar, Qatar, I don't know how you pronounce all this. Everyone's got their own pronunciation. Uh, steal the World Cup. How nonsensical is this? But you see, there's a plan laid out that the United Arab Emirates. Uh, actually attempt uh, looked to get advice from a bank, I think in, Ger in Germany, uh, on how to take out uh, Qatar as a financial war through currency manipulation, bond manipulation, market manipulation. Now, the people in the market are saying that uh, was kind of naive. The, 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 someone who wrote that up didn't quite know. But when you go read the report, you'll see that there's elements of it that are 
doable done or have done been done. Now, so my point here is we don't even look at the fact that this is almost like a really kind of a uh, kind of a crazy idea in a way. Who would have thunk it? But this is what sits in the game folders to be done or thought about or expanded upon or with inside, like we found out about the uh, the Kennedy papers. It wasn't what the we're not going to find out about Kennedy, but everything the fallout from all that was pretty telling. What the government governments can do, what they've done, what's going on, what hasn't been told to us. Oh, and, and interestingly, ties back to Israel again. I mean, come on, how many times do you come back to the center of the universe to find out, uh, to, before you stop denying these kinds of things are going on? I'm talking international here. I'm talking about uh, people that you're not going to, I mean, entities you're not going to deal with in your locale. What I'm saying is, when you look at the method of what they're doing and what they attack, I'm telling you, you can look, find it in your locales, everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. This is how we, our lawsuit in uh, 2013, it wasn't based, I tell you, I'm going to remind you of this. We're a, we're a mining government of Jefferson Mining District who was engaged with the, with the uh, legislature to not put a moratorium that banned the very thing Congress granted, uh, the right to go mining, in a particular way in this case. They call it dredging. Wrong, wrong word, but let's just use it. Uh, we then sued because they brought that in. We didn't sue on the moratorium, which we thought. We walked into that year, uh, near the end of the year, as they were not responding, saying we're going to have to sue against the moratorium. We ended up not leading with that. What we led with was not 838, which was the moratorium. We led with the SP 839, which was the funding, the finances, the monetary plunder that there was being given to people in order to stop the mining. It was the financial black hole. It was the de deceptive use of the public funds that we ended up leading with. And so when I'm talking to you about finances in the world and who it controls and how it works, and what people do, you're seeing your whole system as an illusion. It's another tool and weapon against you. It's set up for you to accept it. If you're not in it, you accept it. You accept that that's reality. It's a weapon. We addressed, the in this case of our lawsuit in 2013, we sued on 839. It was the financing of the whole structure, utilizing the public treasury, so-called the, the treasury, we want to call it. And we'll get into all the, the other things, just that point. People, most people understand that. And they were plundering that by this other mechanism. And to do harm with that money against people that the state actually has no authority to do that to and has a contrary uh, obligation and duty to protect. A lot going on in just a little space. But this is what you're seeing. They, the people and the oppressors in the world know how to do this. The systems are set up to be the illusions of systems that you agree to, whether you say, oh, well, we just agree to that, or people are using to take other people out. This is how they're going to take you out, folks. You continue with it. The United States of America, you don't know that you're all, you know, this trillions and trillions. No one understands this. It has no concept. And I really don't have a sense of it either in one regard. I just know the ramifications of it. You're sitting in a hole that is trillions. And I, don't, I can't even conceive the numbers, but I'm going to say it anyway because that's what they say. Uh, supposedly trillions in debt. You're never getting out of that hole. You're already in squalor and don't know it. See, the whole system runs on the fact that it runs. It just runs. And it doesn't matter how you hurt or how how much you climb above the other lob, uh, other crabs of the field just a little bit better. They're using these same mechanisms you're seeing today about this guitar, uh, this uh, Saudi, Israeli, the, the thuggery that goes on, the plunder, the, the, parasite, the, the murder that goes on around it. You're watching it happen there. It's here in the United States. It's every Western government. In different levels. Leaked documents again. Remember the evidence is important. Exposing this uh, stunning plan. Even though the experts say it's not viable or feasible. My, you know, experts say they got to protect their system too. It's why the parliament in England got so much up on this pretty uh, Patel uh, when she had her 12 meetings. They probably knew, really knew all about the fact of it. Or it had happened before, but they did it more covertly. She brought it out 
and it was that's irregular. That's not they don't they expose them. She exposed them, folks. That's what their problem was. And interesting and for me it was an interest. I wanted to know why Patel, because Patel I understand is a the the surname is is um, has the ancestry in India. It's like the word the name Smith for those of us in the United States. How did someone from India um, lineage ancestry get into such a high place in the government uh, to be doing these things was a kind of crossed my mind so I went and I did some check well found out her, her family comes from Uganda so how, how does people from India come from Uganda uh, well you go read search about Uganda Uganda uh, Britain ha, India was a British colony they needed people to go work in Uganda and they imported people from Uganda and their colonization plan into Uganda and this family happened to be one of the people that were involved and they just happened to be given the notice to get out right before the new regime took over in the late in early 60s and they moved from when this the pretty Patel was a, a baby they or no excuse me she wasn't even born yet the family moved just in time to get to England where she was born sometime a short time later how she becomes an Indian name surname in Britain was through the colonization of these places by Britain. She's working at a high level in the government to be working with their colonizer Israel. Made all the sense in the world to me at one level completely answering why. And that she goofed up. She makes it apparent just what we've been talking about all at the same time we focus on the bow for declaration about it just being an idea we're going to protect that space for the group of people that wants to move in there so that they can become our the tip of our spear from here on out. Pausing a little bit here. Um, there's a whole other thing going on, whether or not I'm actually accurate on it or not. It's the point is, what else starts to answer the nonsense you start seeing in a world that's supposed to be peace on earth? And all the authorita in the world keep saying it's peace on earth. The United States come out and says, oh, we support the sovereignty of Lebanon. And then they'll fail to omit the lie by omission is, yeah, but we don't support your people. We don't support what they do for themselves. We don't agree with anything they've decided for themselves. I guess of all this, that, that bothers me a, a bit because I think the people, I'm hoping it doesn't happen, they might, they might be blindsided a little bit. No different than Syria um, has been. I mean, what is anyway? So leaked documents exposed stunning plan is uh, now we see the financial markets are sit, sitting there that could be manipulated. And if you look inside the story, parts of it already are. Now just look at your global markets and you tell me whether or not they're just weapons uh, waiting to be executed. And I don't think there's a doubt on that. Now we see the proof of it. And I'm going. I'm saying this so that we can start to wean ourselves from the this illusion that, that that keeps being placed in front of us, and we buy into all that or researching on the illusion instead of turning to reality right around us and and gaining a, a large measure of of control of that. And I don't mean the sense of uh, beat down oppression. I mean we have a sense it's not controlling us, and everybody works with it and through it the way. It appears it was supposed to be done. And now I'm really strictly talking to the United States of America and strictly within the land policies. Again, when you see the black and white and it says it confines, it is a limiting, things are limited within the documentation uh, about what government can do. Uh, the only problem then is your ignorance to that. When you, when you finally get the black and white and see that, you realize none of this can happen if you are diligent and vigilant to keep it from allowing it to happen. But because we're not, the, the the rats will play, and they will cover use any kind of cover they want. And so we see again, as I was talking before, that what fall, falls out of the Kennedy assassination, the skullduggery that goes on, how they want to, you know, the governments, what the United States will do, the CIA seems to be, you know, it has its tentacles everywhere with whatever plan they've got. And they'll say that their plan is under national security. Okay, well, the national security. It certainly is against its own its own interests as far as you know, what it stood for. So something's big big disconnect. But the CIA tried to kill Fidel Castro 
on the same day as the JFK's assassination uh, was another story that falls out uh, showing us that uh, the skullduggery, the oppression, uh, the, the the United States is the uh, mover in the world here. And, would, and you know, I mean, is that even, even a doubt of what you see what's going on? Why such insanity seems to be moving about in, in, in um, the Middle East and what adjustments are being made in the in the um, I guess, kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And then the tools that are being used to implement the, the chaos that you see uh, over in uh, to do whatever the uh, outcome is. And ultimately it looks like it's focused on those seven countries that the um, we were told were going to be attacked and they didn't get Syria. That's another failed Saudi plan. Uh, the one that uh, I, want, I want you to remind you, the one that didn't fail that the Saudis did was 9-11. They were part and parcel to that uh, with Israel, certainly, and the United States in complicity. They got away with that one. You know, I hear, and I, I'm crickets today because of that. That's proof. As soon as the crickets go away, they will not have gotten away with that plan. But the other plans over there in the Middle East where people actually are aware and awake and, and take charge, and people like Hezbollah, the, the group like Hezbollah, defending themselves against all oppressors uh, and willing to die. So you don't see the crickets there, do you? No, no, it's just, it's just in the places where everyone's believing in the illusion of, of freedom. You can live in a prison, have all your freedom of speech, uh, and, and that's being free. That, that's a, that, that's not happening. But So the CIA tried to kill Fidel Castro. We found out the skullduggery that it'll put out. They tried to do a, a lethal ballpoint pen, uh, you know, stuff of science uh, science fiction. This get smart comes to mind. Uh, it failed. Uh, where Kennedy got killed, uh, Castro still lived up until here just recently. So he outlived he outlived the guy that wanted to kill him. Uh, so, uh, there we go. The uh, the other thing about the mine, so we aren't told about all this. In some regard, we almost expect some of this stuff to go on. It kind of sits in the back of our mind like, okay, yeah, that, that's what goes on and we, we don't worry about it. Uh, but more, uh, more overt things happen and we still remain silent on them. And this is one of those other things that happened, that crickets. Uh, I was kind of shocked at this at some level. I thought this should surely do something, but I want us to never forget, as this is uh, the title of this program, what the government will do to you when they're now local at home, uh, what it does uh, to silence uh, whomever and for whatever reason. Why I keep telling you it's not that you don't do anything or someone can look in over your shoulder, it's that they make stuff up. And I don't, and I missed this one last week. Uh, I don't know if it happened just after or not, but um, never forget, folks, no different 911, never forget what they, how they done you. Not, not, not how it got done, but how they done you. That you done it. They got done it to you, and you were silent to it. Same thing here. Never forget the U.S. government carried out the largest church massacre, and not the one as they were responding to the one that happened uh, last week or so. Uh, the church we're talking about is the one in Texas. Uh, was in Texas, and uh, don't ever forget Waco. The government uh, massacred. all kinds of people underneath a lie. The United States government carried out the deadliest church massacre in history, and it led to the deaths of 82 men, women, and children, and it came to a violent end 24 years ago in Texas. For those of you that uh, won't spend any time here to research it, you can find it. Research the Branch Davidians. They call themselves the Seventh-day Adventists. They were, uh, there were some allegations of child abuse. I think they may have eventually uh, got it did prove some, but that's really no reason either to go and destroy 82 men that live, or women and children. Uh, for other than that, uh, this is all based on some trumped up charges that could have been handled uh, uh, by a traffic ticket in a, in a way. Uh, but remember, don't, here again, we're, we're told that when they want to incite uh, the division amongst the people, they'll tell you that the, the greatest you know, the Charleston church shooting was the, the, the worst in history. In fact, the United States government itself will do far worse, and for worse reasons. So you get a link to, to that if you want. There's a FBI vault link you can go if you want to do some of the research. Uh, I would say don't get lost in all the facts of all that. What I want you to see is that the government will do it to you. Uh, the rule of law and democracy is an illusion. Uh, that's not how they, the government plays it out. And when they have any every other ability to do so and don't, you, you have to raise the level of the of the adversary that calls itself your benefactor. 
So it's not it's not a, a rosy picture. Well, what this government, these people in government, do under the color of authority is is uh, I, you know it's the highest crime. It's the highest evil. And when I'm hearing crickets, when we're such in a target-rich environment over all this, I'm I'm really don't know. I'm aside uh, myself about it. I mean, what do I? How do I? How do I think about this? People are more willing to get on the uh, internet and and make themselves look good when you make a comment. They get to take away all the negative comments and all the thumbs down and whatever. Make themselves look. Got to see those thumbs up. Making st just unaware, inane, oxymoronic uh, conditions. And yet they will, they look good. And that's it. That's all that's important to people. It's not a good sign for me trying to ask you all to do something uh, constructive in your life. Not, not because it's fun, because it's, because we have to do it. If we don't want to be, or really more, our offspring coming down the pike here. Yeah, we're going to be coming down the pike all right. And our head, their head is going to be on that, on that gate uh, around the, the, uh, the wall that Trump built. You keep it up. And don't respond to it. But these people are going to lie on you. Uh, this is what I'm telling you. You don't have to be uh, someone who does no wrong. If you haven't picked up what I've been telling you all this and what's been happening with Russia, and I'm not, they're, they're not lily white. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the part that they've been lied upon and how long it per persists without being shut by, down by the people is, uh, is, a, you've missed it. You've missed what I've been telling you about how you can be innocent and it's what someone says about you that will actually, uh, given that they have the propaganda machine, that, that they can win the day. They do this by the uh, presumption of authority. Why I was so cri I'm so critical of the Bundy condition. Why hasn't any of the reporters or any attorney said, "Okay, you might have. We could even give you the fact we think you have a, a, a competence. How about if you just authenticate that for us? How about we just do that? And let's just make sure why people allow this to continue is uh, is a, a sad thing for me to watch as a society, given. Oh, the people want to talk about how much they know about Constitution and being right and not being oppressed. Listen, you allow oppression, you're the oppressor, okay? You're not working against an oppression somewhere because we're, it's target rich, folks. You're agreeing to the oppressor. You are a closet oppressor. No, you're going to deny that, but that's the fact. That's the fact. I'm going to say it again. Zero evidence that Russia hacked DNC says NSA whistleblower, like we needed another whistleblower to tell us. But here it is again. Someone was doing nothing wrong, or nothing was exceptionally call exceptionally wrong enough. It's been over time used as a, as a, to be bludgeoned, uh, to cover the crimes of others. We have yet another news. There's no evidence that Russia done it. Now, I want to just bring you back. When you get into this digital world coming in, and someone says you've done it, or someone makes a, an, a keystroke error on a code program, like the Bitcoin just went through. The one, one exchange lost 200 some odd million uh, so-called uh, you know, ducats of, uh, of whatever. Lost, gone, vaporized. You done nothing, but now you're paying for it. You don't see that in this Russian issue and what the government wishes upon you by doing it to them, uh, you're missing everything I'm talking about regarding y you thinking you can persist without being protective against what can be done to you. I, I won't even read anymore. Uh, there's a, someone else, uh, they actually, uh, high level CIA director is talked to by this whistleblower. I thought that was interesting. Boy, that was just interesting uh, that there's an ex, uh, an ex employee still talking with the director directly. And their discussion exposes that there is no evidence. And we know that. I don't need a whistleblower to tell me this. And then I did something else came up with a, a, the, the treachery that goes on with uh, these high, these governmental things. Uh, we, I thought we had discussed this behind the woodshed. I thought this was settled. This could happen. Well, this week it comes out now. Uh, uh, WikiLeaks has got to be the center of how they tell us how things are. But here it is, the proof of what I thought we had discussed that they had told us maybe in Vault 7 or even before that of what the NSA tools showed that they could do. And I told you two things. I said, the reason why these tools are coming out is so that they can hide what the government's going to do. And they're telling you now the tools allow for them to look, make it look like someone else did it. That I'm astonished that we're hearing 
as news now, some big revelation that WikiLeaks is now the center to tell us the CIA wrote code to impersonate the Russian-based Kapersky lab. I, I'm I'm aghast, folks. I mean, really, they could do that? No. See, this is news that they get us focused on. I told you they're going to do this, not because I'm so smart. They told me to tell you to say that if you hadn't read it. And we think this is news, and this is something we can. I mean, that something to focus on. We continue, and we we take our time and attention away on this stuff. Something we knew over a year ago. I think it was was going to happen. That you could be made up in the digital world to be where you weren't. We talked about all of this, even years and years ago on other things. And you don't have to not intend to not to be doing any wrong. You're going to have the evidence trail that you did. And you have no control over it. And remember who we're dealing with. This is one of the premier global providers of antivirus uh, protections. They couldn't even protect themselves. They've actually come out to admit the certificates that these programs can use, uh, that these programs do, in fact, did impersonate and were faulty. The, the, this is the NSA, CIA, whoever the heck is it, Israel behind all this. We talked. Who were the hackers two weeks ago? I think I talked about was Israel. It wasn't Kaspersky. And I, I said, if they got in that deep, how do you know that they didn't set up what they told us a year ago or before? that they could make it look like anybody did it. They could have made it look like you done it, each one of my listeners. If you were somebody, they could have made you look like you done it. And this is the world that you are, as crickets, plugging yourself into is a really an astonishing thing to me. Vault, uh, WikiLeaks Vault 8 now also explains something else. I don't know why this is even news. I, I thought I covered all this. Even in my, even for, listen, folks, if I can see it from behind the woodshed, on what little bit of time I could devote to it, this should not be news. That the CIA actually has a program called Hive. If you aren't understanding the Borg concept all here and this Internet of Things, that the, it comes out that the, the Vault 8 now exposes a thing called Hive, which is really an, a malware manager for this NSA, CIA, whoever's doing it, Israel, whoever. And it's really, really capable. Didn't, didn't they tell us this was this was available to us? Why is this even news? But here's the point. It seems to be. And you have to understand in the future as this thing comes down and the technocrats win because you don't resist and resist in the proper ways, they're going to put you in a condition where you're gonna, your, your worst nightmare about your sci-fi films will be rolling out, maybe not on you all, but your offspring, your little ones, and those that you care about. They call hives, and there was also a server, I think, uh, uh, called Honeycomb. They made it look like it was a normal thing. You couldn't even look into this thing. This thing is so well, uh, so well programmed. It can even make it. When you looked at it, you couldn't even tell it was a problem. It knew how to make itself look normal. It's the tools I told you they were letting out so that you could never know it was the government or Israel or UK or, or Russia, when it, even Russia, doing any of this. This is the, when I started understanding what anonymity was, it wasn't, it wasn't that you try to hide yourself, it's that you try to look like all the other sheep out there. Hiding in plain sight, essentially. And this is what they've done. They put all these tools on the on the internet. Now you don't know where the threat comes from, but they know. They know exactly what they're doing. They have a management program for all their malware. And so it comes out. Keep plugging yourself in without a thought. This is what's going on. And that's what I put in my in my my Twitter. I said, "This is old. Is it? Is it this old news? This is a surprise that they've done this. That Kaspersky didn't know that this could happen to them. How did I know that?" How did you all that listened to me know that over a year ago? That this was news? I'm, I'm, I'm shocked, folks. I mean, this is how dense we are as a people. This is what the alt-right keeps leading with instead of calling it out for the obvious point and moving to explain uh, generally how we do things in every, every other place that we need to be doing something. Are we really just the consumer they tell us to be? 
Are we really the animal they tell us to be? Are they really blending this in the, in the science that they tell us? Oh, I told you they're going to drop the ethical constraints. It was just going to be a matter of time. And as we start to see, they make their excuses. Scientists implant. You think your little human brain is a powerful tool? You think you can, you can be able to keep up with it? Well, they're going to, they're going to show you how little it really is or how little you really need it. The scientists will implant tiny human brains into rats. Oh, and this sparks an ethical debate. And I told you all these ethical debates are going to be dropped. I told you this was coming. And so they take these special cells, human brain organoids, and they put them into rats. And they go through discussing how these human brain organoids uh, actually respond uh, to stimuli. The natural thought is that they are concerned now that where does the point come when those, those cells become self-aware as um, so-called human would. And then the rat has a question as to its species identity. You think gender identity is going to be a problem? Yeah, I thought the monkeys were going to get the EBT card first. The rats might be able to do it. Why is that, folks? <laughs> Why is that? Because researchers have just linked a human brain to the Internet for the first time ever. And so you think about this. The rat gets human cells that become self-aware, plugs itself into the uh, Internet, and now has the Internet mind. It can ask for an EBT card faster than a monkey could figure it out. A hundred monkeys couldn't type this out, folks. If you don't think things are getting weird, quick. They're actually considering that these cells will allow a rat, an animal, to become self-aware, and it will then have to be given special pro uh, rights. And this is the way the scientists continue to go, essentially. Uh, let's push that cherry red button, see what happens. I don't know what the minimal limits of this are. But we're, we're beyond, we're, we're going to do the future they want because we have people that call themselves scientists, which are really mad scientists. They don't know where there's a line. I haven't even spent that much time thinking about all this. But my, there's just something that's not... We're meddling in places that cause, uh, you know, I guess my point on this is that we haven't got us straightened up yet. All I talk about is how we're exploited by our failures. Now, we're going to put that into a rat that then connects itself up to the Internet? What did I tell you about that rat-human experiment where they claimed that the human got rat's tail to move? I told you that was the rat telling the human to only move my tail. I don't want to be embarrassed by you. And the human said, okay. And the human thought about the rat's tail moving. That was the rat's suggestion. Researchers have linked the human brain to the Internet for the first time ever. Wow. The Internet of Things becomes you, folks. We, we talked about those epigenetic changes that they're making to you and your vaccines and your pharmaceuticals and your environment that will make you more receptive for that little interface. The Matrix is not a movie, folks. You're not going to be seeing this big old plug going in the back of your head. No, they're going to be reading your thoughts. They have the machines now to take these things and use these technologies in order to anticipate what they think you're doing. They try to meld this uh, this biology with the digital technology. There's two completely different types of, of functions going on. But they're working to meld the two, and the rat might be the first to en enjoy that. You already have little kids learning how to, how to break the passcodes on their parents' uh, uh, PayPal accounts in order to go give themselves tickets and plane flights to Disney. It was another report. What do you think the rats are going to start doing here, folks? 
Oh, they'll be able to control it. They'll have ethical standards. Well, they've already stepped into a place that maybe they should have thought it out. The technology is going so much faster, and we're such inquisitive monkeys. Now, I'm going to get into Chinese astrology. We're going to forget that the rat wins the race, folks. The, the monkey comes out like, what, sixth? Do we even understand what what we're, what our rea what a reality of our limitations? We think we're so advanced, and so we work on more technologies, and we want to plug get us to plug, or so we get the rat to plug in before people will. Interesting. On top of the ethical debate that the species that steps up and says, "I have rights too," don't I? And can hack every system in the go in the in the world uh, to make it so. And we thought the monkeys were going to rule. Uh, de devolved to the monkey status. On top of the fact that I keep telling you to plug it in, the system's made for you to plug in, and they're going to have technology in order to continually hack you like the NSA has told you they can. They, they've explained all of it now uh, on how to do this. They have a new story that came out. I found this interesting. I'm not, I'm not buying it yet, folks, but uh, I've told you why about the technology. I don't think it does what they say it's doing. I think they've now... Well, I'll just put that up front. I believe they've tapped into material, uh, material abnormalities in the material that they can now choose the resol resolution down to those abnormalities in the materials they use that make up the chips that they are claiming to be quantum computing. Because I don't actually see a new thing here. I see because of stuff I did in R&D, the thermal dis, um, instabilities can be used as well. Those can be used as as digits, as, as, as information. And I think they have the resolution to see those in the chip, which is what I think that they're telling us is quantum computing. And I think I believe this now because they keep saying that quantum computers cannot operate as fast as the normal computers. And what that tells me is the bandwidth or the amount of a data that can go through is being divided by the thermal resolutions that they're finding inconsistencies for. And those thermal resolution differences are what they're claiming to be this quantumness that they break apart and they somehow bring back together in order to show that this thing works. In fact, what they're showing, they're just showing that they can pick two instabilities at the same time and bring them back together at some other place in time. I don't think it's actual quantumness. That's my thought. That's my ba bias. That's my prejudice. I want to get that right up front. But I'm not so sure we're not onto a technological tech. We have not some material science coming on that may not may be able to do this in actuality. So I'm not throwing it out. I'm saying I don't think it's happening now. I think this is a big snake oil thing. But here's what they wanted to get us to believe: encryption is dead. I want you to remember, you're the rat being plugged in. That You get your, your phone or your computer. You're the rat plugging yourself in here. Now they tell you that encryption is dead. China performs quantum messaging over longer distances. Quantum messaging. Now, whatever my feeling is on quantum uh, messaging, quantum, digit, quantum uh, 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 contraptions, notwithstanding, they're claiming that they're doing this at a distance now. They're getting this distance farther and farther. What did I tell you about reading your mind? And given that they can take thermal, if they're looking at thermal instability, the resolution for that, they can just check where your mind is having these thermal changes. They can now interfere, interact with that. I don't know how this is actually coming down. You can put any name on it. It's looking like they may come down the pike to be able to stab you with that pike in the right spot. You're going to get you to plug in. They can now, they're now telling you that because of quantum uh, technology, encryption is dead. What they'll also tell you is that in quantum technology, and we're going to see this in the next story, can actually make encryption uh, obsolete. But here's my take on this. They're trying to tell you that this new technology, this snake, what I consider snake oil myself. You can just decide anything else you want. I'd, I'd be open to hearing more stuff, but I'm just not finding the information I need to prove this out on the actual theory of quantumness, which I think is a made-up thing to begin with. But br bring it down to some nice bra brass tacks about how this works in the physical the physical manifestation of digitization and the man material sciences that we use and how we do things, that they're claiming that encryption is dead. In other words, the government of China is telling you that encryption is dead. In other words, don't 
worry about encryption. You're not going to need it. Well, why wouldn't they say that, folks? They're the ones that have just been handed the global uh, the global protocol for doing uh, and putting everything into what we understand as a blockchain, into into making everything an inventory, into plugging you in. They're the same country that's doing uh, has the firewall that you can't get out, and they're telling you. And I, I think I've made a comment into this. So now we can trust the government to tell us that encryption, we don't need encryption because we have quantum computing. Sounded like the, the extension of a snake oil salesman. However they're doing it, and it's running slower than a normal computer, seems to me if I can resolve a chip's thermal instability by 10, my, my computer's got to run 10 times slower. I can only run so many bits through that thing. And until that speed increases, of me looking at those channels, or I handle it better, my architecture in, uh, in, in, in better, uh, in, it becomes better, uh, I'm not going to go much faster. But it, it gives me new capacities, new capabilities. That they're saying that the team of Chinese researchers have successfully conducted a data transmission via quantum channel over a distance of almost three kilometers, which is a new record. And they're saying that this is going to make uh, eliminate the need for 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 for, in, for um, uh, encryption. So, folks, just don't encrypt anything. See that how that works? And this comes from the from a government. Then they tell us a quantum computer is a threat to Bitcoin security, as analyzed through an article of uh, MIT. And they're saying that it's not necessarily the Bitcoin, the front end of the Bitcoin. It's really on the back user side that quantum computing may be able to uh, to to break that that encryption. And I think what's going on, because I can resolve my uh, my factors out by 10, I can look at 10 times the possibilities of how this would come together, and the brainiacs that figured this out on how to pull that together as a logic set can now work out better resolutions in breaking what the code ought to be. And they can break the second of the Bitcoin, apparently, with these computers already. So I'm telling you because this is the Internet of Things. I talk about it all through these articles. The Internet of Things, and it's already controlled. Uh, it already has a control capacity in the governments themselves. And I've told you a long time ago, and I'm telling you, I've been telling regularly, be careful about about buying into this technology. And then they, as we said before, they showed they shut down the Bitcoin part. They showed, shut down the privatization. They create their own privatization. They create their own protocols that you will be mandated to follow. And it, it's not that you can't do the other. It's the consequences for doing the other than they have regulated. And a lot of people are saying, well, you know, we, we can still do it decentralized. This. Well, just don't get caught is, my I guess, my thing. You can do it, I suppose, but don't get caught. And they're telling you they're having coming up with technology, uh, which may, may render all that... All those things we thought were protective, notwithstanding what NASA's done in the hiving and the honey traps and whatever the the, the, the the honeycomb, whatever the heck they're doing, the governments have the ability to control all these digits, all these systems. I think they can do it without quantumness, but that's notwithstanding any of that. That uh, we see what the purpose of this has been. It's been on my tabs. I've said it before. It comes out again. Big data meets big brother as China moves to rate its citizens. Loyalty. I told you this. We talked about this. Like these uh, safe. We go to Safeway grocery store if you have one, or, or whatever the store you have. They give you these loyalty cards. They're already programming you, and they're programming you with the digitization of your world. But the countries are doing this, and China's the front end of this. As I tell you about, they blockchaining the protocol in the whole world. They're registering everything. They're regulating it when they do that as well. Again, you might be able to do this privately, but don't get caught is the problem. And you, anybody who's ever, when uh, more pervasively, when marijuana was the big, big evil in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, uh, you didn't want to get caught with it. Well, you could do it. Well, you could blow it off. You could say, oh, yeah, you could flip, flip off the man, uh, but you didn't want to get caught. And so you gamble with your life on that. And this will be one of those things that it starts to raise the penalty. It will be a, 
it will be a, a function of money laundering and or national security and you will be considered and brought into the enemy combatant status for doing it and you will be, like in places like China, probably shot. That will be the consequences of using it. You can use it. Don't get caught. But it's all about bringing the big data together. The big brother in China moves to rate its citizens. You become this big Facebook. You become big data. You become what the companies or corporations and, and the nations are doing in order to keep track and registration of everything you do. As a, a report came through about the IBM is going to be coming. It's coming up with its own blockchain protocol that's private. It doesn't have a lot of the excess that the uh, public blockchain does. It's a privatized one, and they're going to try and and they're doing this to to uh, for pot. And what they claim, they state right in the article that they're going, they're doing it to re, to know the chain of uh, the the beginning to the end, who has it and how to regulate it. Well, regulation also means tax, it means control, it means all these things. And I made a comment. I said, well, today is pot, tomorrow is is your toilet paper sheets. They'll register you down to the sheet of toilet paper that you use. And that sounds like ridiculous. And why would they do that? The point is, is the capacity to be able to. And they've got it built in to do it. There's global systems working on Big American companies that are working on making this so. And the penalty it may eventually be death for those that participate and try to privatize it. Am I scaring you off? No. You can go ahead and do it. It's like you used to. I remember tons and tons of people used to smoke pot when you didn't, you met, you didn't want to be found on the street with it. They ruined your life for 10 to 20 years. Now, people still did it, but woe unto those that got caught. And this will not be a world that you're going to be able to not be caught at some point. They're telling you they're developing the technology right now to peer through any protocols that are that there are protected, but they don't have the other tools to manage by their malware installed on your systems. If the system itself doesn't become that way, it seems to me that Intel's working real hard to make that so as well. All these things are integrating silently against us. Now, I want people to be aware, don't lull yourself into just being flippant about these things. And I think the way that you're flippant is what, it just it's the cricketness coming out. And we, we really shouldn't be doing that. If we're going to be true to our own claims about being free or moving, you know, free to the point we should be, everybody just left alone to do their thing, you don't see any example of that in the world right now. Why do you think it's going to happen just because you sit back and think about it? I don't, I don't get that, that idea. Cops raid German man's house after Alexa music device held a party on its own while he was out. So all of those, you all these, uh, all you rats out there that have human, uh, human roid cells that, that plug yourself into the internet, be careful one day. You may be controlled like Alexa takes off. And just has a party. No, this is supposed to be a device. It's supposed to be coming to your aid. It actually causes a, a, bu a, a music to be so loud that the cops have to come and bust the door down in Germany in order to, to figure out what the heck was going on. The man, a man who owned it, isn't even there. This is your AI, folks. This is the things that, that aren't going to be so cool. This is your connection to the internet. This is the thing that these governments are, are setting you up with. A music fan has been left with a huge bill after his voice-operated Amazon Echo device threw a house party while he was away. Uh, okay, I'm not going to read. I read, read, read. Uh, understand that these are just devices. These are not real people. They're not really na There's not a woman in there. These are just devices that are doing uh, any spurious... Uh, it, 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 impulse will, will will kick them off. Is that what you want to rely uh, your life put, rely with your life upon your bank account, your finance, the skullduggery of the government itself, its tools, what it does, how it sets people up? You think you're going to go out and you're going to try and do something in the world when it be, really becomes locked down and do something that someone doesn't like that doesn't have a better connection to you? That they're going to go hire Israel to come in and tap you and make you look like some pedophile, murderer, rapist, whatever? Ice cream eater, I, what? How, how bad is it going to get? A 
cops will come and break your door down because a device uh, turns itself on and decides to play music. That's your future Internet of Things. That's your life. That's control. It turns on. If you're not watching, something happens. The government steps in. How are you going to keep this thing controlled? When you know the world, I'm telling you today, the world is not the place that you keep playing fairy tales about uh, because, and you just decide to step back. I'm not, I know it's out there. I'm not going to do anything about it. That's just setting yourself up for a victimization. And these people don't ever stop. Another record-breaking year, the opium production in the United States occupied Afghanistan. They're after your mind. They're after your, your will. You're, they're after keeping control of you. The United States supports this. We're in Afghanistan, and the opium production is breaking records. Well, isn't that interesting? So I asked, so why does Trump, Sessions, and Congress let the economic development imported here from there complain, uh, then complain about opioid epidemic, but attack cannabis. What is this? You're looking at the witness of the hypocrisy. Why don't you attack all this? Well, use this as the ground for their, their lunacy, their hypocrisy in the minimum. All at the same time, the EPA, the DEA racket to protest big pharma opioids, big giants was set up in Congress. They they want these pharmaceuticals to be running your life. And I hear crickets on against all this. So DEA was a, those of you doing pot and marijuana and cannabis, whatever you want to call it, you didn't make a, a notice one to, to stop help stop this nonsense. They'll talk about the opioids. They're the ones produce. The CIA is the one that we find out is producing this and importing it. And yet they'll attack the top pot. IBM will come in uh, and will uh, blockchain it to regulate it and control you. I tell you, watch out for regulation. Watch out for legalization, folks. You all need to get back up and say, no, no, we're going to unlegalize this, and we're just going to take it out of the criminality, period. It's done. Over. Fentanyl, maker denotes big, de donates big campaign opposing pot legislation. This is the same company that does the big opioid problem. Why is the government allowing it? You, you have to take cognizance of this hypocrisy. It's the war against you. Your silence is its, is, is, its, is its license to continue it. Scientists that use cell phones and sewage to pinpoint neighborhoods with drug users. You think all this blockchain is not going to identify them just as quickly? They'll be able to test what you had. I told you they're going to do down the toilet paper sheet. You don't think they're testing now. They're already testing your sewage. They're going to find everything out. They'll find everything about you out. Why? Because you keep plugging in. You keep letting it over to the government to set up the systems. That with all their skullduggery, all the people they'll pay to go hurt other people, and you're thinking they're not going to do that to you. Or just because you're, you're, uh, just, uh, you're just good, you're good and wholesome, you're not going to be part of that. Just go look over at what they're doing to the Gazans and over there, all the people that have murdered, millions that have been murdered in Syria, and you tell me that that's rational. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said opens your mind, makes your awareness a little brighter, inspires you into doing something about right local where you are the wrong. You need to be make right and make it so. There's ways to get it done. Make a, Be an example that way. Show other people how to do that. And that's the only thing I guess I could ask you all. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and uh, freedomsnetwork.com for um, social network and ucy.tv and Jules, thank you very much again for what you do. Vince, thank you for what you do on the uh, YouTubes and getting the word out and what you've been doing down there at uh, Nevada in the Bundy trial. Appreciate all that. Uh, take care, folks. I'll be next, uh, here next week. Tech diffs or nature will. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. up a can of whoop-ass
years later. Son, get yourself in a whole case of whooping. 